The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter B, while speaking to Nigerians in an online program, made astonishing revelations of how some persons were giving him offers in order to blackmail him and bring him down. He says, if I share what I face on a daily basis in this journey of restoring Nigeria with you, you'll advise me to step down. He said it close to five times while being interviewed. He repeatedly said that if anything happens to him, Nigerian youths and the obedient movement should not stop. It shows the extent of threat and harassment that he faces on a daily basis. If I tell you what I'm going through on a daily basis, you not believe it. I'm now at a point where you might wake up one morning and may not see me. This repetition of threats from the government by Peter B is becoming scary. In one of his statements, he said that the offers that he has been getting from some undisclosed criminal elements in the Nigerian state is mind-blowing. He said he had refused their offers and these people are ready to plan negative things against him. But he says he's ready to stand and sacrifice for the right thing. He has officially offered to work for Tinubu's government as an opposition and not to work within the government. It is obvious that there are attempts on his life, but it will be very dangerous touching a person like Peter B because it is capable of destabilizing the country. However, he said if they should take him away, other people would take over from where he stopped. He also said that he was bribed by foreign countries to give them concessions when he wins the election in return for their support during the election. That means foreign countries actually wanted to bribe Obi so as to support him to win the elections. And eventually, if he wins the elections, there are some concessions he will give these foreign countries. He also said that some elements in the government wanted to make him sad following the Supreme Court judgment. But in reply, he said that he isn't sad and only believe that the struggle will still continue. While speaking on the election, he said that everybody knows in Nigeria that he won the presidential election. Nigeria is an uncommon place. He made mention of the fact that he's not desperate to become Nigeria's president, unlike other presidential candidates. The only business that thrives now in Nigeria is politics, and it shouldn't be. People should thrive in other areas of endeavor. You can have a bad leader, a bad legislature, but to have a bad judge or corrupt judiciary is extremely dangerous for any country. Referring to the recent court judgments, that will have put the country on the path of precipice, if not for the composure of the Nigerian people. If it's elsewhere, it will have been a different ballgame entirely. On the Senate, Obi said some of the senators are heavy heavy debtors who have bankrupted financial institutions. They are now in Congress writing the rules and policies for our financial system. What a tragedy. He spoke about Akpabu, the Senate president who ridiculed his performance at the just concluded presidential election. He said that the Senate president is an uncommon person. When uncommon people speak, common people keep quiet. He won the election in Nigeria, but Nigeria is an uncommon place. That is why our common people are there. On President Tinubu going to search for investors, he said that nobody goes around searching for foreign investors. Foreign investors are like bees. When you keep the honey, they boom towards there. He said we need to attract foreign investors and not chase after them. Nobody can attract investors by attending conferences and meetings. They are like honey and bees. Where there is rule of law, they follow and invest. If you spend lavishly as a government, investors are watching. Why would one want to invest in a country, a country that is indebted, who is also spending lavishly? A Twitter user says that President Tinubu claims Nigeria is bankrupt, but he's spending like Elon Musk. A bankrupt person should act like a bankrupt person by cutting costs of governance. You can see this in the number of aides that has been appointed, number of ministers highest in the history of democracy. You can see this in the allocations to the chief of staff, the president's wife, the first lady, 
the legislatures, the judiciary, while the Nigerian people would have peanuts. Much is being spent on the political class, political elite, and allies of the president. It is logical that if Nigeria is bankrupt, such money should not be allocated to these persons. Imagine building a residence for the vice president and also uh, renovating the residence of the president. While over the years, we have had allocations for these in the tune of billions. Why building another? It further infuriates Nigerians that the ordinary Nigerian cannot have access to basic amenities, but those on the seat of power are the ones uh, gallivanting with Nigeria's resources and wealth. From inception, there had been the problem, they had been stealing this money, and still they're asking Nigerians to tighten their seat belt. How can Nigerians tighten their seat belt where they have not been given the opportunity to enjoy the dividends of democracy and the resources that Nigeria has is only enjoyed by a few? It is very unfortunate that we are in such a mysterious situation whereby Nigeria seems not to want to stand up, rise up and act on these killer and ruining policies of the government that is bent to put the Nigerian people in perpetual bondage. Now you can see that the average class has been eliminated. It is just about the rich and poor. The economy is the rich and poor. There is no average class. It might be very difficult for people to rise up and fund any protest or any campaign against the government, if not from the rich class. Peter B speaking to Nigerians seems to be a man that has a heart to see Nigeria work. While speaking about the Kaduna killings, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party went directly to Kaduna to visit the victims and made donations, while the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria went to Borno State and made some statements. He said that the killings was an act of God, uh, like the popular saying that God gives and God takes. Well, uh, how the people of Kaduna will see this statement is a different ball game. But as a Nigerian, I believe that should not be the approach to that incident. Over 120 people were killed and it shouldn't be an act of God. It would be a slap on the faces, on the graves of those that died and the families that lost so many of their loved ones. Saying it's an act of God, while looking at history, you see that it has been something that has repeated itself over and over again. So is it an act of God to take the lives of people uh, just like that. Going back to the vice president's residence that's uh, to be built by, with 15 billion naira, and we know that in Nigeria we have IDP camps, even though we are not uh, going through a war, we are not in a war-like situation, we have IDP camps. Why not use that money and build houses, make this book comfortable? But a vice president that already has a building, a befitting building, wants to get another one. While those in IDP camps are there suffering in the same country, are we all right? Are we sure that we are okay in this country? A vice president would want to build another office for 15 billion naira, while those in IDP camps are there over the years and nothing is nothing tangible is being done for them. All they can give them is crumbs, just food and food. And most of these uh, things they eat are being donated by private entities. Can't we just open our eyes and see that there's evil in our society? There's evil in our leadership. There's evil in our society. There's evil in our leadership. 15 billion naira for the residents of the vice president. While we have people in IDP camps. We have people in IDP camps. Most of them wallowing in hunger and poverty. We remember presidential candidates going around the country, even some of these uh, areas, and they campaigned all sorts of promises. Since 1999, we have had promises from public politicians. This is how they roll, all sorts of promises. And yet, with the monies they have amassed over the years, with the comfortable life they have given themselves, especially in politics, because according to Peter B, he said, politics is now uh, a career. When we see politics as a career, that country is bound to be doomed. After going around the nation and you see how people are suffering, yet you still have the mind, you have the guts to allocate 15 billion naira, 10 billion naira for software and all computer for the chief of staff. 
10 billion naira. Why there are people in the country that have not seen anything to take as food even for a day. But a government who will come out and say all sorts of things would allocate such until Nigerians show resistance we will always remain here. We know that there are some people that are being paid that are supporting the current situation because of ethnicity, religion, and what have you. But until the real Nigerians stand up and resist the criminality that is in before us today, we will forever be in such a mess, and if not, worse than this. I will close with this. This quote from Peter B. He says, You can have a bad leader, a bad legislature, but to have a bad judge or corrupt judiciary is extremely dangerous for any country. That is a word that will never leave our minds till we have a Nigeria of our dreams.